Hello, movie lovers. This is Apocalypse Movies, and this is our X-Men Apocalypse non-spoilers review. Don't confuse Apocalypse with Apocalypse. This is our X-Men Apocalypse, the new Fox Marvel movie. Are you rapping? <laughs> <laughs> non-spoilers review. So if you haven't seen the movie, this is a safe review. We're going to wait a couple days to put up our spoiler heavy discussion review which will involve jake berlin but today it's just me jacob bartley you know me from uh, the movie news podcast and all the other podcasts and also here with geo ramos how you guys doing out there uh brian singer x-men we know what to expect right right i guess so this movie's uh getting mixed reviews as of lately ever since it came out and uh yeah, we're gonna we're here to give our thoughts, our negatives, our positives. Try to do our best and not spoil the film, uh, not go into too much detail. So let's uh, start right off the bat. Just give our general impressions of the film. Just a couple sentences summing up uh, your thoughts, Geo. Brian Singer has done what no comic book director um, has yet to do, and before watching this movie, uh, he directed three really good to great superhero movies and uh, no director has been able to do that um, and after coming out of X-Men Apocalypse I'll say that Brian Singer has yet to make a bad X-Men movie um, this is his most comic booky film yet I'll say uh, from the costumes to the powers to the look of the characters how some of the characters interact with each other, particularly Cyclops and Jean Grey, like it's all great. Like Brian Singer knows these characters, he has it down. Um, the first time he introduced uh, these characters was back in 2000. He didn't have a lot to work with. It's a different uh, time for comic book movies. So this is kind of his second chance at reintroducing uh, the main X-Men and he, pulls it off great it's fantastic um, this is also his Dark Knight Rises as in not bad but not as great as the previous three films without going into spoilers uh, I'll say the first two acts are strong followed by a less than stellar finish uh, but he does set up the future of X-Men good enough um, I want to see more of these characters um, everyone was great, and uh, I guess that's all I'll say for now. Just you know. Yeah, so I am an X-Men fanatic. I mean, it's as far as comic book properties go, I didn't become a huge fan of the Avengers until the MCU, really. Like, I liked, I loved all of them, like the characters individually, the Hulk, Iron Man, Cap. Not so much Cap until the MCU, but uh, mm -hmm. I wasn't like, oh yeah, Avengers, but I was always about Spider-Man and the X-Men. That's what I grew up on, the cartoons, the video games. So I'm, Cyclops is my top two or three favorite comic book characters. Right. So I was so looking forward to this movie, and I, I left satisfied, but yet disappointed. So I, I really enjoyed the movie. I tweeted out... Uh, earlier this morning that I overall I really like Apocalypse but I, I was really disappointed with it as well and uh, it's just it's really hard to when you've directed in my opinion three great comic book movies all three of them fantastic great like you said never been it's never been done before right and if you would have done a fourth one that would have been insane right and I honestly think this movie's good it's yeah, I don't. It's right under being really good. I would say it's okay. almost there. Like one or two changes, I would say this movie's really good. Right. Yeah. But um, obviously there were some choices made that prevented that from happening. But overall, I was satisfied as an X Men nut, X Men fan. I was completely satisfied. Uh, so yeah, let's get into a little bit specifics. Not exactly, not no spoilers, but just a little bit more specific on what exactly we liked about the film, the positives. Um, I'll start with the young X-Men core. Uh, Sophie Turner is just amazing as Jean Grey. And me and you, we're both uh, people who grew up watching the original X-Men films. So we're very much attached to James Marsden as Cyclops, exactly, Famke yeah. Jensen as So it's hard Jean for Grey. us to accept 
yeah. new actors. So we went into this saying, okay, what are you going to bring to the character? What are you going to do this time that's differently? Um, can you live up to it? And Sophie Turner, Ty Sheridan as Cyclops, uh, Cody Smith McPhee, I think, as uh, Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler. All fantastic. All great. Um, they, they're they given uh, a lot to do as far as, you know, um, get, giving us an idea of who their character is, what their take is going to be as these characters. Um, Nightcrawler um, was, I mean... I'll say he had some pretty funny moments and very similar to Alan Cunning's uh, Nightcrawler and X-Men 2, you know, how it's just his personality. It's the way that he is that, you know, makes, made me well, laugh. He's, he's the oddball. He right. always is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Ty Sheridan, uh, surprisingly a pretty good, uh, you know, introduction. Have you seen him in anything else before? Uh, I had it. This is my first experience mud, with him. Mud. If you haven't seen, I mud, heard he's really good in yeah, mud. Right? Check out mud. Okay. Yeah. But all right. So you remember X Men Origins, right, Wolverine? Of course. Remember that 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 yeah. Cyclops introduction. Where they break him out. Imagine or like that, but done much better. Well, sort of. That doesn't right? even count. Well, and it technically got erased from the timeline. So. Okay. All right. Um, I love. But the no, I get what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Love the origin of uh, Apocalypse. Um. You know, I thought that was really, really uh, interesting and, you know, like to discover how he got to where we find him. Yes. If that, that makes sense. I know exactly okay. what you mean. Yeah. Uh, Michael Fassbender, I mean, wow, they, uh, they, they, they really love this guy because they gave his character, Eric Lencher, uh, Magneto, quite a bit of stuff. Well, they always yeah. do. This, mm -hmm. um, I remember hearing that first class was originally supposed to be a magneto standalone movie mm -hmm. and what yeah. they did was incorporate the script for the magneto standalone and the a reboot of x-men yeah together really so wow. yeah that's they were working on a solo magneto film and they just put that story into x-men first class which mm -hmm. it worked great yeah his whole character arc um there's one scene where and you know what scene i'm talking about where it's just it's pretty devastating. It's like, oh, wow. Like, in the woods. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's all I'll say. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I love the 80s feel. Um, um, there's a couple lines in the movie where we're just, like, uh, laughing because yeah, they're, they're talking they, about 80s things. Referencing the eight stuff from the 80s. Yeah, mm -hmm. that that's done great. Yeah, without uh, ruining it. Uh, there is a special cameo from someone who we saw in the trailers. Um I'll say that his sequence is, it's it's different. It's it's pretty badass. Yeah, I don't think we've ever seen yeah that kind of you know. I yeah yeah I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. I think and, it's foreshadowing. And then the last thing I'll say, uh, Quicksilver, Quicksilver has a moment. Uh, you know, a few, you, a few moments. You had I would uh, say. you had to up it from Days of Future Past, and they did it. So yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I just uh, this. There's a lot of things I liked about this movie. A lot more th things that I liked more than I disliked. That's why I, I left satisfied because I have a lot more positives than negatives. Um, I got to start with Magneto's storyline. They this whole trilogy is it focuses on Magneto a lot. It it really is. It it can be considered you know like 25 percent of this whole trilogy is a magneto origin story in a way mm -hmm. and they continue that from x-men first class to days of future past into this movie and i just love where where he's been since the last movie and where he what he goes through in this film and where he ends up in this film and just michael fassbender's fantastic performance as eric lyncher phenomenal that arguably as far as um just like heart and story and dramatic elements the best part of the movie uh and then quicksilver again steals the show and even more so because he's i mean it's no secret this is not a spoiler he's in the trailer he's all over the trailers yeah. so he obviously has a bigger part than he does in days of future past that's all i'll say he does a phenomenal job in this film why do i forget evan peters fantastic yeah. job as quicksilver i love that they've made him a central part of of the x-men franchise from 
from this movie and the last one. Uh, McAvoy, phenomenal job again as his performance. I was really surprised by Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler was a real standout to me. If I would say Nightcrawler is probably maybe the Quicksilver of this movie that Quicksilver was today's future past in a way. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. A standout. A standout. And, um, yeah, and just going with Quicksilver and Nightcrawler, I thought one of the best parts of this movie is the comedic elements. Mm-hmm. More than the last two, the comedy really hits in this movie. Yeah. And it, I don't want to compare it to the Avengers because Avengers kind of has too much comedy. Especially Age of Ultron was a little bit over the top. That's one of the criticisms I agree with. But this one, just every comedic, comedic moment hit for me in this movie. Mm-hmm. And the theater, everyone in the theater was laughing and cracking up. So I, I got to say the comedy really worked. Um, and probably the best thing this movie does is introduce the young X-Men and set us up going forward in this universe with these characters that did, did phenomenal job. Uh, even story points in the, in the movie where it didn't work, where their characters where it didn't work, I'm just excited to see where they go from this point on. Right. So uh, with all that being said, yeah, a, as you can tell, there's a lot of great stuff in this movie, but there's obviously some stuff that didn't work, for some of our disappointments. So, uh, Gio, without any spoilers, what didn't work for X-Men Apocalypse for you? Um, so Apocalypse is a villain that you and me have both been waiting to see since since we saw X Men One, and you know we're proving that X Men movies you know can work, can exist. Um, so we've been waiting quite a while, and I'm gonna say this one was not really worth the wait. Um, I thought the villain was a little bit underwhelming. He talks a big one but can't back it up when it matters uh, his plan uh, at the end doesn't kind of you know crumbles um, so and as uh, Oscar Isaac is great we both love him he's he's fantastic but I just I don't know I just you know you say apocalypse but I just it didn't really hit that well with me um, I wanted to see more of the young X-Men you know together interacting um, Cyclops and Jean Grey, they had some moments, but when it, you know, Cyclops, Jean Grey, Nightcrawler, and Jubilee, you know, you know where the hell was she? Um, you just, I wanted to see more of them interacting. I felt like they were kind of just, they had some moments, but then it just went straight into, okay. Uh, it feels like they cut out a lot of scenes that they shot. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it felt like to me. Um... Olivia Munn as Psylocke is just eye candy for me. That's it. That's all she is. Like, uh, really? I was, I was expecting more from her character, but I didn't really get that. Um, Alexandra Ship as Storm. Fantastic. Great casting. Love it. Can't wait to see more of it. But <laughs> That's the whole point. Can't wait to see more of it. But in this movie, it's like... the. Okay, what 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 we storm like? What were you? You know, well, you become his horseman, and and then you kind of forget halfway through the movie. I'm like, oh wait, I forgot Storms in this movie. Yeah, so it's like, yeah, they could have used. They could have. She, she needed more, more screen time. Under, she needed more screen underdeveloped. Time. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that takes me right oh. into the four horsemen. You know, it's like, okay. Um, you get your powers. I, I liked how they all got their powers. I, I liked the when whole you, the setup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when it came down to you know get dirt, down and dirty, it's just disappointing. Y'all went out like damn. Like, disappointing. We all some Ultron bots. Anyways, <laughs> uh, the third act was kind of uh, unsatisfying. You know, it just and I guess it, it's this movie is coming off of. You know, BVS for all of its problems, you know, uh, that final third act is pretty damn good with Wonder Woman, Batman, Superman, yeah. and Doomsday. Civil War, that airport, and then that final act. Phenomenal. And then you have X Men Apocalypse, and we just came out of like those two, and we come to this one. Consider the villain, consider the horsemen, consider the X Men. Yeah, it's they- like. They kind of have to step it up, you yeah. know. It's um, I was thinking about it like if if this movie came out like 
back when, you know, l- let's years, say this yeah. came out like two years after X3. Like same story, same plot, everything the same, probably with the original cast though. It probably would have been really satisfying. Oh, it would have been great. But because we've seen stuff the bars. done, the bar has been risen. Yeah. And even by Brian Singer, the end battle of Days of Future Past yeah. and the future, phenomenal. Yeah. You rose, you, you got, you put that bar up yourself mm-hmm. and you couldn't reach it again. Yeah. And you have Apocalypse and it's like, you know, come on. Yeah, exactly. So, um, especially that Magneto moment, like. Like you know, what I'm talking about where two people are kind of yeah, I know yeah yeah. That it's like quick okay, all right. Um, and we kind of touched on this in the last podcast. It doesn't really help or solve the continuity timeline. It just wants us to forget and move on. Um, now, Days of Future Past, it did a lot to help it, but it still left some things. Like there's one. At Days of Future Past, yeah, there's one moment at the very end. You saw it yesterday. And you yeah. Like, I hope they addressed this, and they didn't. Yeah. Um, I just I don't think this movie made the continuity continuity worse, but didn't help. It, it didn't, didn't make help it, it any better. Yeah. yeah. Um, and last thing, and we kind of talked about this, but Jennifer Lawrence, um, <laughs> she needs to move on as Mystique. Uh, she's almost invisible mystique is almost invisible uh very little emotion to sell the character moments um you know you think about what michael his michael fassbender and what he did for magneto in this movie you think about you know sophie turner and what she did for gene gray in this movie what did jennifer lawrence do for mystique you know to kind of she didn't really have that those moments, you know. Like yeah, I I agree. I don't know. It's just I don't know. But uh, yeah, that's kind of my negatives. Yeah, for me, I I was definitely disappointed with certain elements in this movie. I don't want to get too into depth, but I'll just say overall, Apocalypse as a villain was not satisfying. I just I didn't. He should have. I don't know where his what his motivation, other than I'm powerful. I want to take over the world. That's. Not, I yeah, I, I want that, more depth than that. that I think about it, yeah. And um, yeah. I understand for the story's sake this was necessary, but everything was so rushed. And it felt like everything was just put into place very conveniently just to get the story moving. Mm-hmm. And that they did that in Days of Future Past, but it worked great. Mm-hmm. It just it didn't work the same way in this movie. Um, again, like everyone online is saying, like you said, the ending – third act is a little sloppy there are things in the third act that i freaking love oh yeah there are certain things that happen that i got chills watching and i'm like oh my goodness i'm i can't believe i'm watching this so don't the third act is not all disappointing there's some amazing things in there but just overall it was a little anticlimactic i would say Mm -hmm. um and just there's a lot of moving parts in this movie, and a lot of things uh, get left behind. Certain char- There's not enough screen time for a lot of characters that needed to have screen time. I forgot certain characters were in the movie until they showed up again, So, and that's not good. And then, like you said, Jennifer Lawrence just didn't care, and I honestly – Jennifer Lawrence is probably – she is one of the biggest movie stars in the world right now, and there's a reason for that because she's so damn talented. She's like – she's top two or three actresses working in the world today, and I know she can bring it. I've seen her bring it plenty of times, but it's just like Daniel Craig. Daniel Craig is a phenomenal actor and with the James Bond franchise. If you don't care, you're not going to try, and your, your heart's not going to be in it, and I just don't want to see that with the property that I care so she much was, about. She was very specter yeah, in this movie. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah that's going to – wrap it up for my negatives and with that being said we'll close it out with just you know small one or two sentences to wrap up your overall thoughts of the movie and then a score out of 10 Gio let's start with you all right uh not a bad x-men movie but doesn't belong in the same tier that is x-men 2 and days of future past 6.5 out of 10 right now cool um i would agree it's not bad I would say it's good. I think it's a good movie, honestly. Yeah, yeah it's, good. it's um, good. It's just hard because we expect things. It's apocalypse. We expect 
things we're kind of uh greedy as fans because we expect things to be so high and you can't blame us because of the movies we've been getting lately Brian Singer, and especially you know, even if forget civil war forget deadpool just brian singer's bar that he's re raised for himself mm -hmm. just didn't quite reach yeah. that um yeah, i would say yeah it's not as good as x1 x2 or days of future past it's a lot better than origins and x3 i wouldn't you say so yeah so um yeah with that being said i already put my score up on uh on my twitter and facebook uh it's a 7.5 out of 10 as an x-men fan i was comp i was not completely satisfied but i was satisfied with a lot of this movie a little bit disappointed all right well that's gonna wrap up our review with x-men apocalypse spoiler free i want to thank geo for joining me today let me know where they can find you online you can find me on twitter at geo ramos 24 and apocalypsemovies.com every day and you can find me jacob bartley on twitter at jacob bartley underscore on instagram at jacob ryan bartley and on this youtube channel please subscribe hit that like button and comment let us know what you thought of x-men apocalypse or if you haven't seen it what are your expectations uh, what do you think about our thoughts let us know in the comment section and i'll be sure to get back at you until next time you all take care